but why do men have nipples? So a common, so uh, I think this is like a really common question. And there's off, I think someone even wrote a book about this, why men have nipples. And one of the explanations you might see online is that we all start out as female. So this term like, so sometimes you start as a girl, I think, was it ASAP science was it? They said like we were all female. So this is often given as a reason why men have nipples. Well, I'm going to explain why that's not quite exactly true and not quite accurate. They're onto something, but they're not quite there. Okay, so the thing is that when we have a fertilized egg and develops into an embryo and then into a fetus, there's different stages of development. Now, the thing with the stages of development, not everything develops at the same time. So genitals don't actually develop until 11 weeks. So before 11 weeks, everyone is actually sexless. They're neither male nor female. So what happens is that, well, you might also heard of like chromosomes as well. So chromosomes, the X and Y chromosomes. And in a male karyotype, what do we see? That men have a Y chromosome and women will have two X chromosomes. So what we have here, is that at before that 11 week stage is that we have the the structures of genitals forming but they're not quite male or female yet so we have opening and what does this look like hmm maybe this looks like a labia and maybe this could be a penis or a clitoris but it's not quite there yet it's what we call a genital tubercle which is neither male nor female at this point so the fetus is like okay it's before 11 weeks and it's like what am i and it's like, well, we don't know until we, those chromosomes can, those genes kick in. So at this point, before 11 weeks, the fetus and embryo is not neither male nor female. It doesn't have any, again, it's, this is what we have at that stage. Now with the X and Y chromosomes, again, in a typical female karyotype, we have two X chromosomes. And what happens is that these two X double X chromosomes, this is what's going to happen to at this stage. These are going to fuse and these are going are not going to fuse. <laughs> so what happens is that this kind of like pinkish, like like bright pink area is going to form the labia minora, and this genital tubercle is eventually going to become the clitoris. Now in the in the male male car or in the male karyotype. What's going to happen is that the Y chromosome has a special gene that tells that ha activates actually sets off many other genes that are involved in male development. And what's going to happen is that this over this genital fold right here is actually going to fuse together and it forms the body of the penis. And notice that where would be the labia majora in the in the female anatomy. It actually fuses together to form the scrotum. So, and of course, the genital tubercle becomes the penis in the male anatomy. So they both start from the same structures. It just depends on the genes that are on the Y chromosome. That depends whether it develops into uh, a fetus develops into a female external genitalia or male external genitalia. All right, so the interesting thing is that it's not just about the penis and the clitoris and, or the labia minora majora and the body of the penis and, and scrotum. There are many other things. So the thing is that ovaries and testes do develop from the same embryonic tissue. And the fallopian tubes, well, there's appendix testes. Don't worry about that for too much for this class, but if you're taking dev bio, it might be interesting. And the glands, the interesting thing is that things like the Skene's gland and the Bartholin's glands in the female reproductive system, they're homologous to the prostate and bulbourethral glands in the male reproductive system. So again, like it all depends whether the chromosomes are there and they're active and functioning normally. And again, the clitoris and the penis are homologous structures. They develop from that same genital tubercle. It just depends whether that Y chromosome is there and also a very important gene we're going to cover is there and active and causing the development of normal male reproductive organs. All right, so then we have our XX chromosomes. So again, double X chromosomes, you have female morphology, assuming everything goes normally. And then, or goes typically, I should say. 
And then XY results in a male development of male genitalia. Now, one important gene is that, so the only thing are the chromosomes. Well, that's the interesting thing. It also depends not just on the chromosomes, but also genetic activity as well. So the interesting thing is that there's a, this very important gene on the Y chromosome called sex determining region Y, or SRY, or SARI. And what this does is sets off an initial cascade of genes and activity. So actually it's not just SRY, but SRY is like the first domino that sets off a chain reaction that leads to the development of male genitalia. Now the interesting thing about SRY is that some things can happen. So again, if you typically, if you have double X chromosomes, female, if you have X and Y chromosome and everything's functioning normally, it'll be a male. And then what happens is that sometimes the SRY gene gets mutated or inactivated. So it's not actually producing a functional protein or maybe it's producing a protein and this protein is not acting normally on DNA and setting off that chain reaction. So what happens in this case, say the SRY, the functional parts are mutated. Well, if you go to the slides, I, I just, I'm kind of hedging my bets here with YouTube, but these people, they develop phenotypically female. So they, even though they're genetics, they have a XY chromosome, they look externally, they have breasts, they develop external genitalia that looks like a female genitalia. But what is interesting thing is that they actually have undescended, instead of ovaries, they have undescended testes. So that's what we see in these, these and most of them identify as women. So even though they're XY chromosomes, due to something mutating their SRY, this is why they develop appearance-wise as female. And almost everything is female except for the lack of ovaries. They, are, they also develop uteruses as well. So yeah, they have a, what we call, there's a genotype and a phenotype. So genotypically, they are a XY, but phenotypically and appearance-wise, they look female. Now what happens, sometimes it's not just mutated. What we have with the SRY is sometimes this whole part can be deleted or go missing. What happens in that? Same thing happens. They develop to phenotypically female and they develop Everything except the ovaries uh, develop, it doesn't really quite develop into an uh, ovary. It's kind of like this, not quite testes either. It's what we call street gonads. So this syndrome is called Swire syndrome when we have some sort of inactivation or deletion of the SRY. And this is very interesting. So this person, the, and these women, the, they can actually, even, even though they don't have functional or ovaries, they still ha have a uterus. And this is an interesting case. What happened is like this a person who, or this woman who was, um, yeah, so this woman, she has XY. So she has an X chromosome and a Y chromosome, but something happened to the SRY and she has a uterus. And what they did is they transplanted five embryos into the uterus and they worked with the endocrinologist. And basically what they did is they prepared everything. and. Oh yeah, they actually had to do a scratch in the endometrium to help with implantation of the embryos. And she was able to carry one to term and have a successful pregnancy. So it's interesting. This is an XY individual who was able to control like amounts of the hormones. And again, if you don't have the ovaries, how are you going to produce all the estrogen and progesterone? This is why if you read this paper that they actually, it was a very involved process. I mean, I was looking at like, wow, this is really complicated and this is, looks like a lot of work and taking hormones and regulating hormones and a lot of timing. Of course, it occurs in the UK. I'm sure if this happened in the United States, this would have probably cost like, the UK has like universal health care. I'm pretty sure if this happens in the United States, it would probably would cost millions of dollars just to get all the specialists and medical and all the hormone treatments to actually develop this. But yes, this is a very fascinating case. This person, this woman who actually was able to give birth, uh, to carry something to term. Of course, they're not, they would need a donor egg because they don't have ovaries. But yeah, fascinating. This is why hormones are so important in terms of reproduction.